Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests. Is, is anyone familiar with this device? Or, raise your hand if you're familiar with it. Raise your hand if you're not. What is it? Oh, I'm, I'm going to get into this. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I stole this from my wife. This is a Fitbit, and, and it does something miraculous. It, it counts your steps. How interesting, right? <laughs> um, so I, I, I was at dinner with some friends uh, Friday night, and, and my friend's wife told us that she had an exciting competition going on in, in her company. Um, in every office in the, in the company throughout Baltimore and the nation, they were wearing these Fitbits. And the competition was to see how many, which office um, had the most steps. Does that, and she said that was very exciting and that was the competition of the year. And in my head I said, that sounds very, very boring. <laughs> and, and, and that got me to thinking about play. When, when's the last time we played? Uh, when, or when do we play? Because if counting your ste steps counts as playing, then I, I, I think that's ver a very sad statement of how we as adults um, use our imagination. So does anyone here remember the last time that they, that they played? Bernadette, what, what was your last time? It was Sunday at my niece's graduation. I hula hoop, I play bad, badminton, and volleyball. Great, those are great examples. That, and that sounds a lot more exciting than counting your steps on a, on a small contraption you wear on your wrist. And, and the reason I want to talk about play is because uh, b before the, uh, what happened in Orlando, I, I was listening to NPR uh, a few months ago, and they were interviewing a, a PhD scientist researcher, and his job is he was the president of the Instit National Institute of Play, which which is actually located in his backyard in California. And the reason he was the president and formed the Institute of Play was because he was connected to the first mass murder. Uh, I, I wasn't alive for this, but maybe some of you remember in 1966, a young student, or 25 year old student named Charles Wainwright, climbed up at the Texas Tower at the University of Texas he, he had several weapons with him, and he killed 17, 17 people and injured 40 people. In the state of Texas, the governor wanted to figure out, why did this guy do this? I mean, he was, he was a model citizen. He was a former Marine. He was an engineering student. He was an Eagle Scout. Why did he do this? So he, 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 he set up a task force. And, and one of the people on the task force was this doctor, and the doctor did the research. And he said that play, play was the reason, play was the central reason that this happened, that this mass murder happened. Mm -hmm. and, he said, and he said without play, we cannot develop the skills, flexibility, and strengths to, to cope with the pressures of the real world. So I'm going to talk today about the three reasons I believe we don't play. First, we never learned to in the beginning. Second, maybe there was some kind of traumatic incident and we have PTSD or are suffering from PTSD and, and we can't live in the present. And third, we just forgot how to do it. So the first example is never learned at the beginning is, is um, what happened with this mass murderer, Charles. Um, out, out of the study that was conducted, the, the doctor released a report and said, Charles never learned how to play as a little kid. He grew up as an abusive, ki an abusive house, and he interviewed all the neighbors and, and other family members, and they said, Charles never learned how to play. So that was his theory, was that he, 
Charles never learned the skills that he needed to deal with the pressures of life, and he felt coerced to use violence. The second is the inability to live in the present and not to play, and, and, and the inability to play because of that. I think about my, my grandfather. You would never thought he had a childhood, but he did have a childhood. I, I look at pictures uh, where he was a smiling child. I look at pictures of when he got married and he had a big smile on him. But I know that when he was drafted for World War II, uh, one, one of the defining moments of his life was, was entering a concentration camp and opening that concentration camp. And he can never speak about that. And, and, I, and I believe that, that he always lived with that memory and, and that, that, that traumatic memory took him, took away his ability to play and, and actually created a lot of problems for him during his life, in, including dealing with depression throughout his life. The third reason is that we forget that it's important. And that's not why I asked you, when's the last time you played? I thought about it today, and I remember the last time I played was during the snowstorm when I ran out to the park out here and with my wife and my cousin built a snowman and then we practiced doing laps in the snow. And it, it, and it was so much fun. It didn't, didn't matter how cold it was. But that, that was six months ago. That, that was a long time ago, the last time I played. And, and, and what I think of play, really, I think for most people, is the Fitbit and, and maybe going to the gym, getting on the treadmill, or lifting some weights. So as we think about the tragedy and living life, uh, I want to take you back to the first mass murder incident we had in the United States. And we're not seeing this on the news, but, but, but the theory that came out of that is we need to keep playing. Thank you.